McFarlane fans, as well as seven inch tall action figure lovers, this is Spruce and Studs. And once again, McFarlane has come out with yet another line. We originally thought, or at least I originally thought, that McFarlane had completely conceded defeat to Joy Toy with regards to carrying the action figure torch. But I have been proven completely wrong as McFarlane has come out with three different figures. Well, six if you consider their artist proof. Let's just say three. So we have the Space Wolves, the Corn Berserker, in which we have reviewed already, and then finally the Ultramarines Terminator, in which we will review in this particular video. So let's see what McFarlane has brought to the table. Let's unbox this big boy. He is a big boy. Lift the plastic cover for a cleaner look. Obviously, the McFarlane action figure has been unboxed, and I'll have to say, um... At cursory feel glance, it this thing just does not feel right. It just feels like really flimsily constructed. This torso area, this joint, is super loose and it wobbles. So that is probably why this action figure right now just gives off this very cheap vibe to me, unfortunately. Well, let's take a look at the quality of this action figure. And clearly, McFarlane is in the first generation of Joy Toy painting, where these areas here are not metallic. They are obviously a flat red. And that also goes with a case of these lenses right here. It is also a flat red. There is clearly no shading whatsoever on the whole entire figure right here. And then it really would have been nice to actually have some shading in these recesses. And then let's take a look at the tops of the Terminator. It doesn't actually have the same look of the Terminator as well. There's these extra little vents here that aren't included in a regular Terminator when you look at it. Anyways, let's take a look at the pauldron. Clearly you have the Ultramarines U right here. And with regards to this pauldron, it does actually seem to be screened on very nicely. You do get these artificial dings, nicks, and scrapes that are around. So it's nice that there is a little bit of realism that is included with these action figures. So looking at this side, you get to see the Crux Terminatus. And the Crux Terminatus is a bit roughly done, in my opinion. It just does not look as good as the Joy Toy ones, unfortunately. And just like with the other pauldron, this pauldron has fantastic damage that has been introduced to it. So let's take a look at the Power Fist. You have three skulls that have been screened on. I believe that these skulls are purposely done like this to mimic battle damage. And you also do get to see some texture. So we move on to the middle of this Terminator. You clearly have the wing skull right here. It's kind of a metallic dull gold color. Interesting enough, there seems to be some sort of dry brushing that's happening here. I'm not sure if this is supposed to mimic the wear and tear of the armor. As we progress on down to the middle section, the belt area is unadorned. It is made of actually a soft plastic material rather than this part, which is a hard plastic. And this appears to be the case for this whole entire middle section right here. As we progress on to the leg area, there's another Crux Terminatus down here that is completely unshaded. This particular knee has Pock marks, dings, and scrapes. And finally, with the shin area, you get to see a lot more of this silver dry brushing. Maybe it's, again, to mimic the battle damage this armor has suffered over time. And then there is a print right here. So we're going to take a look at the other side. And just like a normal Terminator, the back of this Terminator is completely unadorned and very flat looking. So I'm going to put this guy down. And we're going to take a quick look at his Storm Bolter. And actually, this is a very decent looking Storm Bolter, in my opinion. There are actually multiple colors here, which McFarlane is not really known for. So you clearly have the black for the casing, very dark gunmetal for the other areas, and then a silver wing skull. So let's just take a look at the articulation. So as I'm actually bringing this action figure up, I don't know if you saw this upper torso part just fall back. As I have said before, this part is extremely loose and the first thing that I commented on. So anyways, the motion of this action figure 
it appears that we are able to swivel the head back and forth like so. And then the pauldron is actually just attached by this ball and socket joint here. I will have to say the Deathwing Terminators that Joytoy just produced are probably the best example of how a pauldron is supposed to be. So the range of motion about this arm is 360 degrees, no issues. About this joint here, you are able to get 360 degrees of rotation. About the elbow joint, this is the maximum extension that you can have this way, but you can push the elbow up like this. The wrist area, you can get 360 degrees of rotation, and it does have very, very limited lateral movement like so. With regards to the power fist, it appears that you can get 360 degrees of rotation like this, although this kind of gets in the way. The same thing is with the other arm. This is the maximum that you can push down here and this is the max that you can push up here. You cannot articulate the hand whatsoever. This is a fixed position. About the middle torso joint, it appears that this is the maximum rotation right here, as you can see, maximum rotation. This action figure should be able to achieve 360 degrees of rotation through the bottom torso joint and the hip joint. So there you go. This is the maximum extension for the legs this way. You can push the knee back like such, and this is the maximum extension here. Let's see how far we can kick this leg out. This appears to be the maximum extension of the leg out. And how about back? And we can kick it pretty far back. This guy seems to be rather nimble and pliable. About the ankle area, you do have some bending motion up and down. There's some lateral movement. And I know that you all love size comparisons, so let's quickly compare the size of this 7-inch Terminator to the Blood Angels Joy Toy Terminator. So as you can see here, this is the size and scale difference. The Joy Toy Terminator comes up to basically these McFarlane Terminator at this area. And just because I just finished reviewing the Brick Hammer figures, this is the size of the brick hammer figure compared to the Joy Toy one versus the McFarlane one. And so there is the quick comparison. It's time to wrap this one up. All right, this is going to be a little bit of a rough one. Um, what can I say about this action figure that I'm impressed by? Well, the thing I'm actually impressed by is the Storm Bolter. The Storm Bolter actually looks legit and has a lot of different things going for it, especially with the colors. And the second thing that I'm going to have to say is what I have said before. McFarlane does a fantastic job of putting these artificial dings and scrapes and dents all over their action figure to make it more worn, used more grim dark 40k ish so i will have to give them props for that one however when it comes down to just this action figure itself it is terribly lacking in my opinion and i know that it is very harsh i just feel that when i pick this guy up he is hollow and he's fairly cheap and considering this guy cost about $50, about $10 more than what McFarlane was charging for the big action figures back in the day, I don't know if this $50 is actually going to be worth it or not. You're pretty much looking at Joy Toy prices for Terminators. All you have to do is add an extra $10 and you will get a solid Joy Toy Terminator out of it. So I guess the only reason why you would want to pick up this action figure is to match the rest of your seven inch tall action figures that are from McFarlane. So closing out this is Spruce and Studs. Look for more action figure reviews as well as action figure comparison videos in the very near future and I'll see you guys all in the next one.